Hello everyone and welcome back to Choose Your Own Galactic Adventure, a Choose Your Adventure style Let's Play of X3 Avalon Prelude. So we are still continuing the Trial by Fire series, and this time it is time for the Battle Cruisers, the so-called Light M2s. And let's see what our contestants are. From the Paranid we have... Poseidon. And it is the one with the, well, it's tied for the most amount of guns. It has the highest max laser energy and laser energy reload rate. It has, its weapons that it use um, do the least amount of damage, but are the most energy efficient. Well, they're kind of... Their longer range guns are tied for the most energy efficient, and their beam weapons are slightly less energy efficient than the Terran versions that do the most damage. So, it depends on what range it's fighting something at, how energy efficient it is. Then, the from the Argon... Boreas. And this has the same shielding as the Poseidon. It has the same number of guns, though they're laid out differently. Because this has them split evenly between three turrets. And the Poseidon had one turret of four and two turrets of eight. Right? Oh, actually, so the Poseidon has two more guns. Right. So the Poseidon has the most guns, but they do the least amount of damage per weapon. And this one has the, it's tied basically for the uh, laser energy reload rate, has the second amount of max laser energy, and it has the special bonus of the ion cannons, which are the guns that our electric eels use, the weapon energy and shield draining guns, that it can switch back and forth, but those are really damaging to shields, not damaging at all to hull. Well, very little damage to hull. But they require a great deal of energy to fire. So using them would quickly drain its uh, weapon capacitor. It does have cluster flak array for anti-fighter, while this has the uh, phased laser array, which is the best, and this is probably the second or third best uh, anti-fighter weapons. Then, additionally, beam weapons, you have the phased, or the plasma beam cannons, which are the least energy efficient, but do the second most damage. Yeah, that's right. They are actually, like, 50% less energy efficient than the other two versions, so it's quite a big jump there. However, the Photon Pulse Cannon, which is the slower firing, slower projectile speed, longer range, does more damage, but you can't hit anything that's small. It has the, or it's tied with the Paranid version for the energy efficiency but does more damage, so it's the best energy per damage of all of them. So in that respect it does good, so it does good at long range, but less so, or I should just say it does good at long range versus big slow moving targets, but not so great close up versus faster moving targets like say corvettes or frigates. It doesn't do very good, it runs out of energy very fast. Then, finally, we have the... Tobosaku A. Which has the heaviest shieldings, has a third more shieldings than the other two. It does have the fewest amount of guns, but their guns do the most damage. So that's kind of a... interesting... um... How to say this? Interesting spread of weapon classifications. You have the most guns, least amount of damage, highest weapon generator, then the kind of medium, not too hot, not too cold, 
Then the other one hits really hard. Best energy efficient. This also is basically about the same laser energy reload rate as the Boreas. But again, this has fewer guns. And the guns are more energy efficient. So it's probably... You could say it has more. It, also, it does have quite a bit less max laser energy though. As far as shield... Uh, power go all f four of them can recharge all their shields at maximum rate something I looked up recently is that a two gigajoule and one gigajoule shield can only use a maximum of 2,000 power per shield so there's like 1200 power that's not getting used and way more in these other two because they have like 1300 shield energy and they just can't use any more than 6,000 so they have twice as much as they can use but that's kind of going off on a tangent. Just, they can all recharge their shields at maximum rate so the shield power generator doesn't come into it at all. They're all roughly the same speed. There's about a 10% variance across them in terms of speed. It's not a huge deal. So this is going to require quite a lot of testing because they're so close and they may have their specific functions for instance, if I, if I wanted to use the Boreas out of sector, it might come in handier because laser energy isn't used when you're fighting out of sector. Of course, that also goes against it because it has the ion cannon so to drain laser energy, so that would kind of decrease its survivability but increase its damage. So it's going to require, require a bit of testing. <clears throat> and to test this, we're kind of going to do more of the same. Go to a... To get a mission where we have bit this up against some kind of M2 class ship. A full-on M2. And see how they fare against them. I'm not sure who's going to win, actually. It's going to be interesting to see. But I'm going to go find a mission and then I will be back once we have... Some more combat, maybe a montage, maybe not. I no aim. Asteroid. Attention, one of your ships is under attack. C 
Lucio's doubt. No incoming message. One of your ships is under attack. Farpoint. Relay. One of your ships is under attack. Farpoint. Relay. Attention. One of your ships is under attack. Farpoint. Results. The Tobosaku variant A did the best versus the bigger ships I sent. Uh, each ship against three frigates, and then against a Xenon Z, which is a M2 plus. So the Tobusaku did best against the Xenon Z, but worst against the frigates. It's lower rate of fire, kind of cancelled out its uh, increased firepower because of the guns would get distracted by fighters and it was really poor against missiles which cancelled out its shields in that instance so it is out of the running the Boreas did uh, second best against the frigates it had energy problems with the uh, multiple targets like that and it couldn't keep the shields or their energy drained couldn't keep their shields down so it kept using its high uh, energy use ion cannons which kind of caused a problem with that the against the xenon z it was dead last the xenon z had 28 percent shields left when it died when the boreas died while the Tobusaku actually managed to kill the, war, the uh, Z, but dying at the same time. The last ship, the Poseidon, did the best against the frigates. Its rapid firing guns did amazingly well against missiles and fighters, and its kind of peace through superior firepower strategy works really well against frigates. It was able to take on not just three frigates, but four frigates and come out on top without taking any hull damage. So it did amazingly well in that. Against the Xenon Z, it was in second place, but it was somewhat close second. It had about 10 to 15% shields left. So I think I'm probably going to go with the Poseidon. There's the other option I could use the Tobusaku as a battle cruiser but use the Poseidon in place of a assault frigate and flak frigate because it would fill both those roles and then just have a Tobusaku and Poseidon pair instead of having a uh, battle cruiser and two frigates there's something to be said for that but I'm not sure. I kind of want the distributed firepower a little bit. I 
think the more ships to absorb the damage is going to be better in the long run. So I'm probably going to go with Poseidon and two frigates for that. Next episode, I think we will try out carriers. Depends on if I can get enough weapons to equip the fighters. But that's going to be it for this episode. Like if you like, subscribe if you're not. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.